Hey guys, this is Test 50 Game 2. This is the committee members game. It is an in-out game, also known as selection. We know this because they tell us in the first line that members of the committee will be selected. So some are in, some are out. I've laid out a bunch of stuff here, but I'm going to explain all of that. We've got the parents, FGH, students, KLM, teachers, UWXZ. Now I've laid out some rules here as well. They tell us that we've got exactly one student, so one of, the, one of KLM is in, the other two must be out. They tell us that, you know, we can't have both U and W, so I put one of those out. They tell us that we can't have both F and H, so I put one of those out. I'll explain more of that, more of that as we go. So the second rule, F and H can't both be in, that means that at least one of the two must be out, so I've reserved a space in the out column for F slash H, which of course is a parent. I'll also write it as a conditional so we can link things together. So F requires not H, contrapositive H requires not F. Next, they tell us that M and Z cannot both be selected. We don't have either of those here, so I'll skip that and come back to it. They tell us that U and W can't both be selected, so I put U slash W in the out column, meaning at least one of those two is out. I didn't do the same for M and Z because we've already got M mentioned here regarding the student's rule, so I don't want to repeat M because that would imply false things regarding minimums. Then they tell us you know, F cannot be selected unless Z is. That is something I can link in here. So I will write that, you know, F requires Z, contrapositive, not Z, requires not F. Next, they tell us that W requires H. I've already got H here, so I'll just stick W in front of it. W requires H, contrapositive, not H, requires not W. Next, they tell us that, you know, coming back to the earlier rules, M and Z cannot both be in, meaning that if Z is in, then M is out contrapositive, if M is in, then Z is out. So we've got almost everything here. The only rule we didn't do yet is U and W. So if U is in, W and U conflict, so we know that as a result, if U is in, then W is out, contrapositive, if W is in, then U is out. And this right here is our initial setup for the game. We'll be doing more work over the course of the game for specific diagrams. Anyway, question number six, is a typical orientation question. We just want to take one rule or inference at a time and apply it to all five choices looking for violations. So for example, we know that we can never have both U and W in when one is in, the other is out. Scanning through the choices for violations of that, we see that choice D has both of them unacceptable, so D can be eliminated as a result. Next, for example, we know that we've got to have only one of the students, one in, the other two out. So any choice lacking students altogether or having more than one would be unacceptable. So choice A has both K and L, not just one of the two, so A is bad for that reason. We also have, you know, F requires Z and not M and not H and not W, so checking for choices with F, we'll see if we also have Z as we need to, for example. And choice B violates this, having F but not having Z. Next, we could look for, you know, W in requires H in, F out, for example. So let's look for choices with W. We see that choice C has W yet does not have H, unacceptable, so C is gone, leaving E by elimination for number six. Next, number seven, if W and Z are chosen. So I'm going to put W and Z in the in column right here. W in requires U out and requires H in, meaning that F would have to be out. So we're building this little by little here. We also know that when Z is in, we will lack M. So if Z is in, then M's got to be out. So M is one of our out variables, meaning that the in must be either K or L, and then the other one of those two will have to be out. So a pair of people who could also be chosen. Well, we can't have U because U's out, so for that reason, A is gone. We can't have ever have both K or L period, K and L period, because we only have one student at all times, so B is gone. We can't have M because M has to be out as a result of Z being in, so C is gone. Looking at D, G, and K, yeah, K could be in, and G is undetermined, so yes, we could have both G and K, and D is our answer for seven. I will look at E, though. F and G, no, because F has to be out, of course, so E is gone, leaving D by elimination for number seven. Next, number eight, a pair of people who cannot both be in. So we're looking for variables where we have a positive variable followed later in the chain by a negative variable. For example, you know, F and H, F and W, U and W, 
f into m. Those are all variables where if one is in, the other has to be out. So we're looking for variables that are positive followed by a negative. So scanning through the choices, f and g is not a conflict because g is not even mentioned in the conditionals. g could always be in space permitting. So for that reason, a is, is gone. Look at b, f and m. Well, if f is in, then m is out. And if m is in, then f is out. So yes, we could never have both of them in. So b is our answer for 8. I will look at the rest, though. g and k, of course, is not because g is never in any of the conditional rules. So g could always be in space permitting. Looking at d, h, and l. h in does not lead to l out. And of course, l is not even in the chain here. So that's not a conflict. Then finally, looking at e, m and u do not have a conditional relationship. m in simply requires z out and f out. And u in requires w out. But m and u do not influence each other. So e is gone as well, leaving b. Next, number 9, if w was chosen. So if w is in, we automatically know that u is out. So I'll put u out there. If w is out, if w is in, then h is out. And if, if w, sorry, if w is in, then h is in. And if h is in, then w is out. So this is what we got as a result of w being in. Now they're asking us for what could be selected except. So they're asking us really what cannot be chosen. And we know that when w is in, u and f have to be out. So u is not a choice, but f is. So a is our answer for number 9. Next, number 10, if we have exactly one parent. So if we have exactly one parent, that means that you know one of f, g, h is in, and the other two of those must be out as a result. So I'm going to reserve another space for f, g, h in the out column. And you see that as a result, our out column is now full, meaning that everybody else must be in. So anybody not mentioned here so far will have to be in. So that means we're, we've got x in, that means we've got z in, and that means we've got the other one of w or u in as a result. So this is what happens due to the fact that 5 are in and 5 are out. They're asking us who must be in. Well, k is still ambiguous, so that's out. You know, that's eliminated. L is still ambiguous. So that's eliminated. M is still ambiguous, of course. U is still ambiguous. But X has to be in. So the answer to this question would have had to be either X or Z, because those are the only two guys that have to be in concretely. Z is not a choice, but X is. So X is our answer for 10. Next, number 11, if M is chosen. So if M is chosen, that automatically means that K and L have to be out as a result for certain. So I'm just going to make you know one of them is K and one of them L, just to make that a little bit easier to see. K out, L out. Now, we also know that M in requires certain things. M in requires Z out and requires F out. Now, you see that you know the out column is full. It's got K, L, U, U slash W, F, and then Z, meaning that everybody not mentioned here has to be in as a result. So W slash U has to be in. We know that X has to be in. We know that G has to be in. And we know that H has to be in. So this is, you know, we, we pretty clearly see that X, G, and H all have to be in for certain. They're asking us who must be selected. So we'll just run through the choices. F and G, no, F concretely has to be out, so A is gone. G and H, yeah, they're both in for certain, so B is our answer. I will look at the other choices, though. H and K, no, because K has to be out, that's gone. K and U, no, again, K has to be gone. And then U and X, no, because U could be out, it's just that X has to be in, so E is gone, leaving B.